In this video, we are going to show you how to design a splint width bar using three shape dental system. This possibility has been now added to a wide range of available indications. For a splint's design, dental system will automatically move to appliance designer. To start your design, fill in the order form. While designing a splint, you have an option to work either with orthodontic model or digital impression. In our case, we use digital impression. When new order is ready, you can open the digital impression. While doing that, appliance designer will ask you to prepare the intraoral scans. Click Prepare. Start with setting the occlusal plane following the guidance in the plane alignment window. Then set the sagittal plane along the median palatine suture. Having both of them set correctly, click OK to get to the next step. Now you can create a virtual base. First, trim both scans by drawing splines. Once splines are closed, you can adjust their shape. When you are done, Click Next to get to the Fit Base step, where software will divide models according to occlusal and sagittal planes set earlier. The software will automatically generate the area for the base, but you can adjust it. If you make that area too small, the software will inform you. You need enough space to fit in all cut scans. When done, click Next the software create the virtual base. If you need to adjust the models, click OK to get to the Sculpt step, where you can adjust the models, upper and lower respectively, using Sculpt Toolkit. When you are done, click Finish on the workflow bar. Scans or models should be in correct occlusion. If occlusion requires adjustment, for example of opening, that can be done using Dynamic Virtual Articulator. For that, click the Articulator icon and set the opening value on the front pin. Then go back to Modifying the Alignment to see the actual opening between teeth and click Lock the Current Alignment to keep that position during design. Once you have set a new static occlusion, click Next to get to the Define Occlusion Plane step. At that stage, you can use the plane you have already set unless you would like to change it. To do that, place three occlusal plane landmark points once again. Occlusal plane will be used to define the initial insertion line of the splint and will determine the angulation of the bar. Now click Next to get to the Scalp Articulator Placement step to set models according to one of the occlusal planes. Analyze Scan's Auto Placement method is marked as default, as well as Use Guide Plane. Select Plane in relation to which you would like to set models. Then click Perform Placement to do so. When done, click Next to get to the further steps. In the Remove Undercut step, the insertion direction line will appear and will be set according to the plane. If you select the Show Colors box, you will visualize the undercuts blocking areas. At this stage, you can adjust the insertion direction. Just adjust the model's position and click the Set Insertion Direction button. Having insertion set, in the Settings menu, you can specify the amount of retention that will be left in undercuts after blocking out. And you can set the angulation for the blocking out material in the Block Out Angle box. Click Preview to see your settings applied, and use the plane to cut the size of the model base. Then click Next to get to the wax trimming step, where you can do the final adjustments to the blocking out material using wax knife. Click Next again to get to the splint shell design step. Now you can start designing your splint. For that, in the settings menu, set required splint thickness, offset, an edges configuration, and then set the margins of the splint. When the margins are set, click Preview to see how your splint will look. 
If you are happy with the design, click Next. Now you can adjust the design using standard Sculpt Toolkit. If there is a need for that, the following step should be the bar creation. Start bar design with drawing a spline. You can draw it directly on the model based on default settings or on previously set occlusal plane using 2D spline on plane to keep the initially defined angulation. When done, click Next. Bar has been generated. In the Bar Settings menu, you can change the bar type and ending. To modify the bar design, use available control points to adjust its shape and size. When designing a bar, make sure that the design doesn't cross the splint margin line. If crossed, the bar and the splint will not be generated properly. When done, click Next to go to the step where you can shift the whole bar design or rotate it. At this step, you can make some adjustments to the bar design using Sculpt Toolkit. When you click Next, you will get to the Combine Model step, where the bar and the splint will be merged together. Click Next to combine them. The following step allows you to adapt the design to antagonist, both in static and dynamic occlusion. After that, you can add integrated or detachable ID tag and set all its parameters. All ID tag options are available in the settings menu. If you are going to mill your splint at the next step, you can add drill compensation, but if you will not, select the box, skip this feature and click Next to move to adjusting your splint and bar design using Sculpt Toolkit. When done, click Next to move to the validation step and use 2D cross section to check if there is enough material thickness for the splint to be produced. After validating your design and making sure that everything is alright, click Next to get to the save step. Then click Close. We hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching.